So I've been talking about PFASs, what's in your drinking water, what's in your shower water, all these damn chemicals on your body, in your body for the last six, seven years. Here's EWG has been on the front line fighting to ban fluorinated chemicals for more than 20 years. It started when I read an article in May 2000 in the New York Times announcing 3M Company's plans to abruptly stop making its popular Scotchgard products from a chemical the company had been using for decades. I found it odd, to say the least, that 3M would take this action voluntarily. Scotchgard was making them $300 million per year in sales. A few days later, the New York Times published an update. The true story was that the EPA had threatened to take regulatory action against 3M if they did not voluntarily end production of Scotchgard and the chemical in question, which we now know as PFOS, after internal company documents revealed numerous ominous red flags for EPA scientists about PFOS toxicity and contamination. This story had me at internal company documents, and by the summer of 2000, EWG scientists and communications experts were in the chase, the beginning of what would be decades of research, publications, and advocacy to document and solve the problem. The details were devastating. 3M had found that humans around the world were polluted with PFOS. It lingered in human blood and in drinking water for years. And in laboratory testing, most rats exposed to PFOS in utero died shortly after birth. Much of what we learned in those years, we owe to Rob Ballot, the lawyer who led a class action suit filed by residents of Parkersburg, West Virginia, where the DuPont Teflon plant operated and a similar fluorinated compound, PFOA, was showing the same profile of toxicity and contamination. Rob was masterful at winning discovery fights against the company, forcing it to release thousands of insider documents about PFOA the most important of which Rob delivered directly to the EPA. Decades of internal memos and test results detailing what DuPont managers knew about PFOA's toxicity and when they knew it, including DuPont's efforts to keep it all secret, even from their co-workers and the communities they were poisoning. EWG scientists kept track of every important new disclosure at EPA and translated the information to policymakers and the media generating a steady stream of headlines. We're very proud to have been the first advocacy group to bring national attention to PFAS pollution, and we're honored to be fighting side by side today with frontline groups and community leaders across the country who now lead the grassroots fight. Over the course of 20 years, EWG's analysis, expert commentary, water and product testing, and peer-reviewed research have steadily advanced the science and publicly available health data on fluorinated chemicals. And through all of this, we've been unrelenting in our push for action from EPA, the CDC, FDA, and lawmakers. EWG's map of PFAS contamination sites nationally has become a standard reference for journalists and policymakers. Regrettably, the list of contaminated sites and water supplies grows with every passing week. In 2019, EWG scientists published our own health-based limits for PFAS using the most up-to-date research available. EWG's strict standard of one part per trillion is supported by other leading scientists and reflects the extreme harm these chemicals can have on our health at very low levels. It stands in stark contrast to EPA's so far weak attempts to stem the flow of PFAS pollution. Thanks to our work and the work of local leaders in impacted communities, members of Congress have begun to make PFAS pollution a priority. After 20 years of relative inaction, more than 60 bills to reduce and remediate PFAS pollution were introduced in 2019 and 2020 and are taking even more rigorous action to set regulatory limits for PFAS in tap water and groundwater and to restrict or ban it in consumer products. Today, with your help, EWG is seeing the fruit of more than two decades of nonprofit research and advocacy pay off in widespread bipartisan support of PFAS regulation, bringing us closer than ever before to cleaning up legacy contamination and turning PFAS pollution off at the source.